Hello everyone, this is the fourth video on the SMO Open slash second round from last year. Question four, which we're looking at here, is probably the most approachable problem because it can be just tackled by a lot of experimentation. Right, so the first question is geometry. If your geometry is not good, you may find that very difficult. The second one's a functional equation and it had a lot of traps inside. So it's a little bit technical as well. Uh, question three is kind of obvious, but you might not know exactly how to write the proof. Now this one is kind of nice because it's just basically a game. It's a game where you have a bunch of numbers from one to n, and you're allowed to change the colors of any three numbers, which are defined a plus c equals to two b. Now uh, to help with intuition a little bit, just note that a plus c equals to two b uh, means that a minus b equals to b minus c, which means that it is just a three-term arithmetic progression. Right? It means that uh, one of them is the average of the other two, or that they have a common difference. Now, also, we realize that based on this problem statement, we are supposed to ask for which n can we always change the colors of all the numbers to white, irrespective of the initial coloring. Now this is important, irrespective of the initial coloring. Now that means that, actually, right, on one hand, it means that we must be able to just switch one of them from black to white. So a single number, let's say they're all white and there's one black. So we need to be able to switch a single number from black to white. The flip side of this is that it is sufficient to be able to switch a single number from uh, black to white because if we can switch a single number from black to white and let's say that I need to switch these five numbers, then I'll first do the procedure that flips that first one, then I'll do the procedure that flips the second one, and then I'll do the procedure that flips the third one and so on. So it means that our question is that instead of worrying about any initial coloring, it's just enough to ask, can I switch any single number from black to white? So each number uh, without affecting the rest. Now let's start off with looking at some things that we can or cannot do, right? We experiment a little bit. Now obviously we cannot do it for one, two, three. Right, there's not much to say there. Now let's say that we have one, two, three, four. Now the only arithmetic progressions available are one, two, three, and two, three, four. So we won't be able to swap two without swapping three because they always come together. So if let's say that you only have two is black at the start, every time when you swap two, you swap three. Every time when you swap two back, you swap three back. So you will never ever be able to uh, get it for n equals to four. Now let's look at n equals to five. Uh, and I'll write down all the APs we have again. So apart from 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, and 3, 4, 5, we also now have uh, 1, 3, 5. So the question is, uh, does this one work? Well, um, you might want to experiment a little bit. The key idea is that uh, down here, it was uh, two and three, right? Two and three were the things that were glued together. In the other two combinations, three and five both appear. So it means that every switch is going to switch two out of two, three, five. Which means that if let's say 
that I started off with the two again. No matter what I'm going to do, I'm just going to shift the two to the three or the three to the five or something. I'm not going to be able to get rid of it. Right, so each swap is going to swap two of them. So the number of black is invariant mod two. That's the technical way and the more rigorous way to put it. Now, let's say that we continue down to, let's say now n equals to six. So I want to see how far does this go that uh, there always be something that is a bit stuck. Because the more numbers we have, the more APs we have. And the more APs we have, there's a higher chance that things will now be okay. So uh, for n equals to six, I'm just going to borrow this list. I'm going to write it again. So it's just this list of numbers plus you have four, five, six and you have got two, four, six. Now, this one don't contain two out of two, three, and five. But the new number six is included, right? So there's five and six, two and six. So now it is actually going to be two out of two, three, five, and six that will always be swapped together. So six still doesn't work. Let's continue for seven. So I want to know if this keeps going on. And remember, this is the SMO open, or even if you're doing the SMO senior, same thing. You have four hours or five questions. And let's be honest, uh, anyone who's watching this video and taking it, there is a very, very, very small chance you're going to solve all five questions. Right? Every year, there'll probably be only a very tiny handful that will solve everything. So um, it is unlikely, meaning that you have time. You have time to experiment and think. Don't feel that ah, so much work. You have four hours. Why do you think they give you so much time? Okay, so apart from uh, all of these, what are the new ones that we get? So the new ones that we get, uh, common difference of one, we get five, six, seven. Common difference of two, we get three, five, seven. And common difference of three, we get one, four, seven. Now this one already has five and six, right? So there's two of them. This one has three and five. So there's two of them. This one has zero of them. Well, that's still okay, right? So okay as in okay that we can still show that it does not work. So it's now zero or two out of two, three, five, six. Uh, let's continue to eight and see whether this is going to continue. Why am I writing one to eight as if you don't know what are the numbers of one to eight? Okay, CD me. Uh, so what does, I put across, why did I put across? Uh, because all the rest failed. So far this one, maybe not. Uh, six, seven, eight. You have got common difference of two is four, six, eight. And the common difference of three is two, five, eight. Okay, so there is two and five here. And there is a uh, six down here. And I guess you can say that the eight is also going to get lumped in with these. But if you try lumping in the eight with this, the difference is that now here's the eight as well. So if you lump in eight, you cannot say it's zero or two anymore right? because there's one down here. So unlike all the previous ones you've seen so far, which is uh, mind you quite a lot, I don't seem to be able to easily find a way to disprove it. So I'll put a question mark here. So let's play with one to eight and see whether maybe it is possible. So now I'm really going to write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Now, first of all, I'm just going to see whether I can find a strategy to swap, well, anything at all. And by swapping, right, all I'm going to do is to say, okay, if I select, let's say, 345, I'll just tick 345. If I select 567, I'll tick it. And when you see two ticks, it means it got swapped twice, which means that it kind of got neutralized. Okay, so we'll see what we can do with a bit of experimentation. Okay, so uh, let's say that we want to go with uh, some of these APs. Now, we know that if we only use the uh, these types of APs, uh, we are not really going to get very far. But uh, we can still combine this with some of the others. So for example, if I take 1, 2, 3 and 2, 3, 4, now I'm left with 1 and 4 and I can use 1, 4, 7. And this will sort the 7. In other words, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 4, 7 will swap the 7. We can do something similar for 8 as well if we just shift everything by one step. And we shall make use of the wonders of technology, uh, which is uh, to just shift everything over to here. All right, so this will also work if I want to swap 8. Oops. Technology is wonderful, but uh, I've forgotten that I need to move the box as well. So for 8, uh, yeah, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, and uh, 2, 5, 8. Now, if I can swap 7 and I can swap 8, that means that if I want to swap 6, I will just do the process for 7, the process for 8, and then the 6, 7, 8, 1. Right? So that will give me 6, and I can inductively run all the way down to 1. So 8 is possible. And you can tell that this approach is going to work whatever we do. Right? So it means that uh, for n greater than or equals to 8, I'm going to do this strategy. First of all, uh, I have shown that I know how to swap 7. And I can swap 8. Uh, now that I know how to swap 7 and 8, I can just go and do 7, 8, 9, and then swap back the 7 and swap back the 8. So that gives me a swap of 9. And then after that, I can use 8 and 9 and get 10, and I can also go downwards. So you can also reverse this back, right? 7 and 8 and 6, 7, 8, like what we saw above, is now going to be a swap of 6. And we can go back down to 1 as well. So this means that I now have a way of swapping each individual number when I have n is greater than or equals to 8. I've also come up with an explanation for why is it that everything from 1 to 7 doesn't work. And funnily enough, you realize that you can actually just have used the 0 or 2 out of 2, 3, 5, 6 actually just handles the entire thing from 1 to 7, right? Even though we were building it up by adding first uh, 2 and 3, then 2, 3 and 5, then 2, 3, 5, 6, uh, technically we can just put those for everything, right? For let's say n equals to 5, there's no such thing as 6, but it is still a valid claim that 0 or 2 out of 2, 3, 5, 6 are going to get swapped for each of my operations. And we are done. So your answer is that um, for which positive integer n? Well, uh, any n greater than or equal to 8. Uh, just a minor note on grammar. It says for which positive integer n? Uh, it seems to give the indication that uh, there's only one, uh, but not really, right? The positive integer here, it is using integer as an adjective. So it's just saying, like, let's say, for which odd n. 
right? The uh, odd is not meant to be singular. It is just meant to be an adjective. So here, for which positive integer and positive integer is an adjective. And, and that's why n can be multiple values, or in this case, infinitely many values. Well, that wasn't too bad, was it? Uh, I think uh, insight-wise, we didn't really need to do as much compared to a lot of other open round two problems, but you need to be willing to experiment. Otherwise, you will never ever spot something like this 2, 3, 5, 6 issue, and you also will never ever realize that actually it works once n is large enough. So experiment all the way, whenever you can experiment, there will come a point in the SMO round two where you're stuck on every single question, and this is where you look for a question you can experiment on so that at least you feel that you're discovering something and making some progress. Thanks again for watching. Let me know if there are any questions or clarifications, and we will look at the last problem uh, in the final video. And the last problem is going to be pretty long and pretty involved. So I guess uh, that one will take a little while. Do let me know if you have uh, any other questions you'd like me to go through. I'm not sure if I'll have the time, but I can at least take a look. Thanks again and bye for now.